the crypto space evolves at a very fast pace and so you are always faced with something new kind of new ideas new developments but that's i guess what makes this field exciting a large part of my current research agenda is about cryptocurrencies they have gone from being niche products to be almost mainstream today there are a few people who haven't heard about bitcoin or ethereum we also see the emergence of a new financial architecture that aims to replace and disrupt the current financial system there is a lot of debate about the benefits and risks of this new financial architecture and cryptocurrencies in general. In my research, I try to shed light on some of these open questions. While the new ecosystem is evolving, different applications are built and the regulatory framework is developed, research can have a lot of impact. In a recent paper with a co-author of mine, Antoinette Shaw at MIT, we study the Bitcoin market, which is the oldest and still the largest cryptocurrency market. We built the most complete database of entities that are tied to the Bitcoin wallets. And we use this database to study the evolution of Bitcoin markets. We document that the reality of the Bitcoin ecosystem is very different from its original idea of decentralization and leveling the playing field for all. Even after more than 10 years in existence, the Bitcoin ecosystem is still dominated by large and concentrated players. The top 10,000 investors control more than 30% of all Bitcoins in circulation. The top 50 miners often control more than 50% of all aggregate mining capacity. This inherent concentration makes Bitcoin susceptible to systemic risk. And it also implies that the gains from further Bitcoin adoption will likely disproportionately fall to a small set of people. This field essentially faces the same frictions that in the traditional finance and then overcoming these frictions is challenging and often you do need some regulation or at least you should not just discard what has been done in traditional financial system because a lot of the infrastructure or architecture in the traditional financial system is not random it's just to overcome those frictions and make financial markets more efficient and make them work so in that sense i think there is a lot to learn from the traditional financial systems and not just to discard them saying that oh kind of it's time to forget about them. So that's, I think, one of the main lessons. I remember when I saw first or heard first about cryptocurrencies, I said, oh, it's interesting. And the question was what we can learn by looking at these markets. And one of the reasons I was interested is that because it was a wild kind of West, as we call, right? No regulation, nothing. And also with the blockchain technology that makes data public and requires all transactions, we actually, have some chance of looking at the behavior of investors and individuals. It's not perfect because we know that we don't see people behind those addresses and the actions, but nevertheless, we can, in many cases, identify individuals. And by looking how, say, tokens move from one address to another, we can deduce how people trade, about how they think about the system, and that allow us to get deep insight into financial markets. This research will be useful for regulators and real market participants. We presented this work to many regulators such as Bank of England, SEC, the New York Fed and many others, also to many private companies. So it looked like there is interest and I think the field evolves very fast as I said and Usually you could see that regulators in particular find themselves in a situation where it's very difficult to keep up with this space. And even I, as a researcher, also always have to kind of learn something new almost every day because the pace of innovation was so fast. So in my research, I try to explain how this world works, kind of to map it maybe into something that we know and also to explain what the economic forces work in the systems that people can relate to.